What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be talking to Demiser, the Demiser from Black and Thrash Titans. Demiser. Uh, we're going to be talking about their new albums. We're going to be talking about their new album, Slave to the Slice. Uh, that's going to be coming out later on this month via Blacklight Media. Uh, we're going to be talking about some influences on this album, how it compares to their last previous album, upcoming tour dates, um, and just a bunch of other stuff. We're going to talk about some of the tracks in this as well and just see where the future lies for Demiser with Demiser and the rest of the band of Demiser. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. And without further ado, we're just going to go right into the interview and I'll see you guys at the end. So I'm here with Demiser of Demiser from Demiser. Um, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing all right. Nice, nice. That's good. So um, we got want to go ahead and just kind of get right into it, just talking about the new album. I know we're a little pressed for time or whatever, so I'm just going to try to make this as quick as possible for the both of us. Um, so I want to kind of get into the album just where it starts with Feast. Um, this track opens up with just a blistering drum solo um, and just kind of sets the mood for the entire album um, from top to finish. Um, what were the some of the uh, influence going into this re release with uh, Slave to the Scythe, uh, especially with that opening track, would you say? Oh, painkiller. You know, nice. I think I think that that's where that's where the minds were um for sure uh you know we we had kind of tossed around that idea um i didn't know we were actually doing it until i started to hear the uh hear the tracks myself um but uh yeah it, it kind of it, it works out uh you know that song we um when grave pisser and myself you know started kind of writing that song it was uh we we wanted to start it off with kind of just you know a, just kind of like a ripping solo um and then we we're like well shit if we're gonna we're gonna do the solo why not why not do a drum solo <laughs> first anyway so yeah that was kind of it it was, it was a total painkiller vibe type thing um you know not as good but <laughs> <laughs> And hey, listen, I, lo I love Scott Travis, man. Scott Travis is one of my favorite drummers of all time. Hell yeah. Nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Obviously, we're not going to live up to that, you know, kind of tier. But, you know, we we definitely wanted to do something like that that we could ha have fun with and kind of give a nod to. Nice. I like that. It's a, no a nod to your, I guess, your influences and those who came before us, so to speak. Yeah, we do it on a, on a lot of different shit. We did it a lot on the first album. We we've done it a few times on this new one as well. Um, so yeah, something we'll continue to do. Speaking of uh, influences and um, just legends in the metal scene, I want to talk a little bit about um, your guys' last full U.S. tour date you guys did about a maybe a year or two ago with Bulldozer. Um, I know you guys were only on your first album at the time. Um, and that that what did you any lessons that you guys kind of took from the road from that tour with bulldozer that that was our second run with bulldozer that we that we did last september um we did another we did a tour with them the year before on the, along the east coast mm -hmm. um uh and it was the exact it was the same lineup uh the boys and deceased uh and aries kingdom as well um and you know we became good friends with everybody uh on, on that on that run or on both of those runs. I mean, so much so on the first one that we wanted to do it again with the same exact same lineup. Um, but uh, as far as like lessons from the road, I mean, I guess you learn something new every time you go out, but I mean, for the most part, it's just try not to lose your fucking mind, you know, day in, day out with the same motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. And you know you 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 got no alone time. You have no peace. Um, it is just you know it, it is it's not what everybody cracks it up to be for sure. I mean it's a it it's a job. Um, 
you know, it's, there are worse things you could be doing for damn sure. But, um, I mean, ultimately it is, you, you have a, you have a job to do, you know, you have to get to the venues on time and all that kind of stuff. I don't think any of that really trans like transpired into anything on the record. Um, uh, one thing that did, uh, I guess Chuck from, uh, Aries kingdom, um, I mean, we became great friends with those guys and, uh, Chuck has a, uh, guest solo on, uh, total demise. Okay. Yeah. Uh, on, the, on the new album, uh, that so that really, it, it, you know, violently ripping solo at the end of that, at the end of that, uh, song that is, that is Chuck. Really? Yeah. From, um, Harry's kingdom. Yeah. Harry's kingdom. Nice. Yeah, uh, order from order from chaos. He's from order from chaos too. I mean, so I mean that's that, he's a he's a fucking legend. Nice. I love I love that. I love seeing like just the collaborations, especially like with bands like post being on the road, just going in the studio and just working together so much. I think it's just great, and you could definitely see that. Uh, it translates really well throughout the album, on especially on that song, Total Demise. I have um because when I was listening to the album, I just had like a bunch of just flash notes for each of the uh. The songs and I wrote total demise, epic, many solos and just sick heavy riffs. Yeah, sick. Yeah, I mean that's that solo. Chuck wrote that solo. Uh, we sent him the song. Um, you know, we we actually we had some uh, some minor setbacks due to um, you know what kind of software everybody was using um, for the recording process. Mm -hmm. But you know, once we got that once we got that solo back and we all listened to it for the first time, especially when he hits that tapping part, we we're like. Yeah, that Fuck. part was just gorgeous this, and beautiful. Yeah, it's fucking perfect. All right. Uh, so going back to the new album, um, I want to talk about um the uh, one of the tracks, Falomancer the Falomancer. I guess this would be like a follow up to um, Demiser to Demiser from your guys' first album. Would that be correct? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we kind of want to. We kind of want to do one for everybody. That's um, fair. I like that. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, so in in Fester, uh, you know, at one point um like on the demos was called uh raw fucking vomit was his name so then we had we we had a song on the first album too called raw F raw fucking vomit like we're that. unsure if we're gonna if we're gonna do give him two and give him an investor song but i want to go and now and talk a little bit about um the interlude um, that you guys had i feel like it was a really cool uh so you don't really hear it a lot especially in metal uh, just like really cool acoustic parts that are like sort of loomy and stuff like that and it feels like a really cool, like, transitional between, like, the first half of the album, which is very much, you know, full speed, fast as fuck, and then goes into the second part of the album, which I feel is a lot more heavier rift and much more, like, the hellish side of it. Um, Is that something fair to say, I guess, with the... Yeah, the I, yeah I... I it, another thing that we, we did on the first album, too, is is we threw that acoustic track in the middle. Um and we we want them to maintain a level of um just looming and just ominous vibe with that with those with those songs very pretty kind of give you a second to breathe before we you know rain hell down upon you again i, I loved it definitely it was it was definitely a really just it was a nice little ear break uh and then it went into uh, that song "Total Demise" that we were uh, speaking of about earlier. Into that yeah, insane and, solo, and it, how that just comes in, just really like right from those last couple faded notes of that interlude, um, and just comes in real heavy with that with that fucking real solid riff, just real heavy out of fucking nowhere. And that's kind of what we wanted to go with. So. Talk to me a little bit about um the album art that you guys uh, decided to go with um, and the artist that you guys chose for this album, since this is being, I guess, this beautiful, it's dark, it's hellish. That's Lucas. I mean, we've we've used Lucas for a lot of stuff um, and and we'll continue to do so. He's a good friend of ours um, and him and I go back probably. I, don't, I, I mean, 15 years or so, uh, maybe at this point um in our in our lives um he's done stuff for old projects of mine and he he's the one that i mean he came up with our logo uh he draw he drew the scythe up he drew uh he did our uh our first album uh as a wood and as like an, an engravement um okay. in wood 
Um, and then, and then we asked him to do this one as well. And just, you know, this is the first thing that he's done for us that we've really kind of added any color or anything to, um, I, I mean, I've got his pieces all over my house too. Um, but he's just a good friend and when, you know, we're, we'll, we'll continue to use him as well. Um, you know, for different things. Like he, he did some art for like a koozie for us as, as well. Um, solid dude, solid artist. I mean, he's got, um, he's got that Albrecht Durer style of art that he like that he does so fucking well. Um, which is something that I very heavily gravitate towards evil and religious pieces that, you know, were always so demonic and everything, but, you know, um, uh, that he just, he really fucking nails that style. Um, and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll continue, continue to use him for that. Um, whether it's for album covers or, T more t-shirts or you know whatever it may be posters whatever you know we'll we'll continue to use him he's just a good friend that goes way back and he, he knows what the fuck is up he knows what we're looking for but for this album cover or uh we we just sent him a few of the songs and some of the lyrics to them and that's what he came back with us uh or came back to us with and you know i don't think any of us could have been more stoked it just turned out to be just absolutely beautiful and i love like the hints of just the gray tones and the reds in there with like the subtleties of the browns in there too. It's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, beautiful I was, piece. I was really happy with the color. Cause I mean, I'm not really a whole, very big on a lot of color. Um, and uh, some of the guys suggested, Hey man, maybe we should see what this looks like with some color. And what he sent back with that was like, he gave us two versions of it. And you know, obviously the, one on the covers the one we went with but yeah i mean it was it was sick i'm like okay maybe color can fucking work because this is cool so closing out the uh the album uh is uh this eight minute out uh, piece called in nominant baphomet um talk to me a little bit about just ending this album with just such a long uh beautiful piece of metal it's a little bit different for us i think i mean we our, our songs are usually you know fairly short to the point catchy this one has a lot of parts um and a lot of different mood swings to it uh comparatively to our other songs um which is why i think it fits so well as a closer um we kind of leave the door open to explore you know some more territory with that song um instead of you know painting ourselves into a corner that i feel like so many artists do um, and so many bands do, um, you know, without stepping away from where we are, you know, at, at our roots, um, we can maintain like that first half of that song is incredibly demiser. It's an, it, it's incredibly like, like it is 100% a demiser, um, demiser song. Um, and then it kind of goes into some like almost I or immortal type shit towards the end. Um, and and just more uh black metal um but we we wanted to kind of open up that door a little bit just you know give ourselves some more wiggle room with this the styles that, of music that you know we feel uh comfortable putting out and you know while remaining our you know what we are no of course definitely i i definitely was here in the um um, you said the immortal influences in there i was hearing a little bit of emperor a little bit of like some bathory maybe um, yeah, I I just thought it was I thought it was just a really really cool because you don't usually see that a lot in like black and thrash or thrash metal in general usually like these long epic epic pieces I guess um and I just I think it's a really cool thing to actually introduce to people. Yeah, I mean shit. We when we started out, we started off as like a two piece, and we were we were like a a Bathory warship type band. And I, I was just doing drums and vocals, and then another guy was doing guitar and vocals. Cool to kind of, it's cool to kind of, you know, listen to that and kind of hear that come back a little bit. Um, the with with that song, I think in particular, you know, it um, that song was wrote primarily in the studio. Um, that song was not fleshed out before we went in. Um, to to finish right or to finish recording um and it kind of just got fleshed out in there um with the uh help of our uh producer and recording engineer nice. and you know I, and I, I love how it ends um you know especially with that fade out 
Um, yeah, I don't know how else you're going to end a song like that, to be honest. But um, like I said, man, I, I, I dig how it kind of leaves. Uh, I wasn't sure what to think about it at first, but the more I listened to it, the more it became one of my favorite tracks on the album. And, um, you know, kind of definitely leaves that door open, like I, like I was saying. Wrapping up the interview here, um, are you able to tell us anything about the rest of 2024? I know the new album comes out in a few weeks on August 23rd. Um, I would assume that there's going to be some sort of tour coming up with this as well. No tours right now uh, in the pipe. Um, we uh, are definitely in the works of trying to plan something for early next year. Our One of our guitar players is having a baby. Um, and, you know, so we're, we're going to lay low the rest of the year. However, um, you know, we have a lot of plans. I mean, we have, uh, we have, we have a couple shows to kind of close out this year. Um, we have, uh, mass destruction metal fest in Atlanta that we're doing. Um, and, uh, we have a show coming up here on the 10th in Charlotte. Nice. Uh, we have, um, uh, probably a couple, one or two shows, maybe, to kind of help close out the year in Columbia. Um, and then Jan in January, we're going to really start revving things up again. Um, but, you know, it, it kind of gives us a chance to let the album simmer a little bit, let people learn the songs, get used to them, maybe even visit the first album, which maybe they have not heard before. And uh, so when we do hit the road, you know, our, our fan base has grown and, you know, people have talked about the album um and you know hopefully that benefits us uh but you know we do have we do have plans to definitely do a tour next year um uh very likely an east coast tour and maybe a separate short west coast run or a southern run um i mean we'll see we'll see what happens there's a couple of things that are you know being whispered about that aren't set in stone yet so i don't want to mention them um but you know potentially some stuff going through texas um and uh stuff like that as well so we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it but you know we do have every plan or um you know we have every intention of definitely hitting the road uh quite a bit for next year like you guys seem just ready to go you're eager to get out there and i i think it's just fantastic not touring um, this year is driving me insane. So I we need to fucking do something. But uh but you know, we family family comes first and you know, like I said, uh we're gonna have a, a new little addition to the demiser family. Um <laughs> a little demiser. Yeah, yeah. Falamancer's having a a a young one. So we'll we're it's not like it's not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen until twenty twenty five. But you know, if if you do wanna catch us, obviously, you know, Charlotte, Atlanta columbia i mean you'll, you'll find us in those places miser thank you so much for hanging out with me for this time being i, uh, I know i'm kind of short um because i know you got a bunch of other things going on later on today um thank you again for just taking the time here i hope to see you guys on tour sometime next year on that east coast run possibly a philly day cross my fingers yeah i know <laughs> philly is one of our favorite places to play we'll definitely be up there hell yeah sure. i love it man um thank you so much for this time um and dude, have a rest of your day. Congrats again on the new album. Everybody here, make sure you're picking up the new album from Demiser, Slave to the Scythe, out August 23rd via Blacklight Media slash Metal Break Records. Um, thank you again, dude. Um, oh, man, just have a good rest yeah, of your man. day, man. Thank See you. you around, Cheers, brother. brother. Cheers.